Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. I have a few announcements to start with. There will be a reception sponsored by the PNC to welcome Reverend Utley and his family. It will be in Ermin Hall immediately following the service. The Chancel Choir will rehearse this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Fourth Fest has requested the churches in Racine to ring their bells prior to Monday's parade. And we're still looking for some additional bell ringers for tomorrow morning between 9 and 9.04. So if you can help with that, please see Pat Badger after the service. And with the parade returning this year, renting out spots in our parking lot is an excellent way to raise money for future youth mission trips. If you're able to volunteer to work tomorrow or need any additional information, please see Ben Neal. Next Saturday and Sunday, we will be holding a rummage sale. If you have items to donate or questions, please see our sexton, Tina. We also need volunteers to monitor the building during the sale. If you can help, there's a sign-up sheet at the back of Ermin Hall, or please see Royce Ernest. And as this is the first, Monday, or first Sunday of the month, it's time to wish those born in July a happy birthday. So if you were born in July, please stand and be serenaded. Bless the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing, who rushes into places of hurt and harm with hope and healing. Please join me in the call to worship. God has accomplished all things through Christ so that we might live as God's own children. Let us give thanks to God and live for the praise of God's glory.
please be seated. God has blessed us in Jesus Christ with every spiritual blessing and calls to be holy and blameless. The riches of God's grace promise forgiveness of our trespasses. Let us confess our sins. God of creation, too often we have neglected and forgotten the gifts you give us to grow and bear fruit in your world. Like some rusty spade in the garden shed, we have allowed your wisdom and insight to fade from our thoughts. Perhaps no tool has gone more unused than our imagination. In a world so rich with your blessing, bubbling over with your love, and resplendent with your glory, we walk around as if our eyes are closed. We do not love as we might, because we cannot begin to imagine how much we are loved. We do not seek justice, because we cannot imagine your profound capacity to liberate and restore. We fail as peacemakers because we can't imagine the full abundance of your goodness and mercy. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Grant us a vision of the new creation we are together in Christ. Forgive us and make us whole. Amen. Hear the assurance of forgiveness. According to the riches of his grace, which God has lavished upon us and sealed for us by the promised Holy Spirit, hear this good news. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Since God has made us a blessed community, the church, let us greet one another in whatever way we can with the peace and joy of Christ. Peace and joy be with you. Also with you. Our first scripture reading today comes from Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither, in all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. second reading comes from the letter to the Ephesians in the first chapter, beginning in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he has chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, 
to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the richness of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplished all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. May the Lord grant us hearts and minds to hear what the Spirit is saying to So there's a lot going on in that text, um, right? But it's a holiday weekend, and it's hot in here, so I will try to uh, just deal with a couple of, couple of things in there. But I want to begin by, by thinking about the, the psalm that we read, Psalm 1, the first psalm in the whole Psalter of 150 psalms, the one that sets the tone for how the people of God will worship all the days of their lives. And what the psalmist does there is begin to imagine what will the people be like if they listen to God? What will the people be like if if the desires of God, God's will for God's people, the vocation that God set for all of us when he first spoke and brought creation into existence. What will it be like if the people listen and follow? And he imagines, he imagines right a tree planted by rivers of water. And that tree, when, when we listen to God's word, follow God's desires, will bear fruit It will become a tree of life in the midst of whatever darkness and desolation there is. If you go all the way to Revelation, there's another tree of life in the center of the new heaven and new earth, and its leaves are for the healing of the nation. The psalmist wants us to imagine each of us as trees of life, by streams of living water, God's love and grace and mercy rushing over the roots that help us grow. And Paul, or whoever the author of Ephesians is, we don't need to get into that, is trying to do the same thing in this letter trying to tell the churches that this letter goes to to step back from all of the evil and darkness that they see around them, to step back from the difficulties of the day to day and catch a glimpse of the rich soil that they have been planted in. This It's it's like a hymn that begins this letter. It's just full to overflowing. And if you you read it in the original language, it's blessed to be a blessing in the blessed, and it's loving the loved and loving. You know, it's over and over again, this gracing with grace. It's, It's just full, packed full of all of the good things that God has done and is doing in this world. And the author wants us to take a step back and say, 
How can we remember again? How can we ground ourselves again in this rich, rich soil? So as we imagine who we can be, how we might live as a people together, that we're always digging our feet in <laughs> to that rich soil of God's grace and God's love and God's goodness. I want to just look at two parts of, the, of that text. There are at least four times, if I'm counting right, where the author says, all things, everything, all that there is <laughs> has been brought together, has been renewed, has been recreated in Christ. And I want to look at, at just two of them quickly, hopefully. The one, when it talks, it talks about later on in the, in, the, in, the, in the text that through all wisdom and is, insight, the mystery of God has been revealed to us when all things, all things were recapitulated, all things were summed up, all things were retold in Jesus Christ. And this is where our imagination fails us. This is where the world that tries to box in our imagination gets us in trouble. Because it's hard for us to see just how broad, just how wide, just how deep is what God has done in Jesus Christ. What the author says is that there was a story in the beginning. There was a story of us as God's people, us walking together in the garden in the midst of the day, in tight and intimate communion with the one who created everything. There was a story of our vocation as people who tended to the earth, people who brought forth fruit, people who shared with each other, people who brought healing to the world. And that story was distorted, that story was twisted. We turned in on ourselves, we forgot about those around us, we hoarded what was the abundance of God. But when Christ came, walked among us, healed the sick, released the prisoner, brought sight to the blind, on, on, on. That story was retold. That story was redone. It was, it, the story was, was, everything was wiped away and it got put back together again the way it was supposed to be. My, um, my sons and I have been watching Big Bang Theory. And this is not an endorsement in case you watch it and you don't like some of the things that they talk about. But I've been thinking about this word because this word in, is about this long in Greek, but um, it, it was used by mathematicians when they took a bunch of figures and, and, and added things up and summed it all up together. And it's kind of like if you imagine that all the people around the world in their desperation and pain, in their, in their goodness and grace, in, in every aspect of their lives, are little data points all around. And we've been trying to figure out what it all means, how to make sense of how we move and live together. What the author is saying in this text is, is that when Christ came, Christ brought the grand theory <laughs> that unites it all, that brings all of the points together, makes, brings them into harmony, makes sense of it, shows us a path forward, shows us a way to live and to love. And just so you don't think that I, you know, show up here with completely rose-colored glasses and I, you know, 
the, the world is just lovely and great and full of grace and love. Paul does not believe that either. For Paul says at the beginning that, that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And in, in the Greek, every and all are the same word, but uh, we don't need to go down that road too far. But when it says every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, we automatically think of how, you know, that means that, you know, somewhere off in the sweet by and by, you know, everything will be great, and um, that's what we can hope for and wait for. And our ever living with God's love is an important thing, but that's not what the author is talking about. Their author is, when he says that we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, the heavenly places were the, place, were the places where the people of that time thought that the principalities and the powers or the evil power underneath all that goes wrong in the world, that's where they resided. They resided there bringing bad things into our lives. So when Paul says that we have been blessed in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, Paul is saying that wherever you think the darkness comes from, wherever you think the bad things hide, wherever that thing inside of you that makes it so that you don't do what you want to do <laughs> when you know is right, wherever that is, whatever that is, in Christ, the Spirit has come into that place and it no longer has dominion over you or anything in this world. In Christ, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. Everything that you worry about, are anxious about, wonder about why it's the way it is, God already knows about it and has already brought the Spirit into that place to redeem and restore it. To retell the story that you're telling yourself about how it can't change or can't be different. I imagine it like this. Sometimes when we look out at the world, you might see just a dust-covered ground, just dirt <laughs> out there. And it seems like nothing good can grow from that. What God is asking us to do is to scratch the surface a little bit, <laughs> dig in a little bit and realize that all of that has been turned over, that there is rich soil of God's grace and goodness and love and wants us to dig our roots deep into that soil. Remain connected with God's love. Remain connected with the grace that God is pouring into our lives. Remain connected, dug in to the spirit in our lives, driving out everything that would keep us from what God is drawing us into. One of my favorite theologians, Willie James Jennings, talks about being a child in Grand Rapids. And his mother was a gardener. She had a garden out in her, her back, backyard. And every spring, he would wait for her and she would call him out. Willie, come out here. And she would ask him to take his hand. And there would be the rich, black soil in the garden, ready to be planted, ready to be seeded, ready to have things grow. And she would say, put your hand in, Willie. Dig it in and feel the possibility. Feel and imagine what can grow, what can develop out of this soil. And I would ask us to do the same thing. Take some time to quiet yourselves. Remember all the grace and goodness and love that God has poured into each of your lives. Dig your feet into that soil. Imagine what can grow. Will you pray with me?
God of overflowing love, abounding in grace that you have lavished on us. All we ask is that you open our eyes to see your glory and goodness all around us. Reconnect us to the rich soil. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
The next song is a, is a new song that I don't think we've done before. Um, so we're going to teach it a little bit, but luckily it's really easy. So, um, and, and as you'll see in your bulletin, uh, the, the lines that uh, are for, it's kind of a call and response, and the lines that, that you'll be singing are the ones that are in the bolder print. So basically I'll do the first line, you'll repeat exactly the next line, which is exactly the same, and then it just goes on and on like that. So let's, let's just try the first verse a little bit slowly, and then we'll, then we'll get into it. So it goes. Come, let us eat, for now the feast is spread. And then you'll go. Come, let us eat, for now the feast is spread. And then I go. Our Lord's body let us take together. And then you go. Our Lord's body let us take together. Perfect. So here we go. Ready or not, here we go. Two. Feast is spread. Our Lord's body, let us take together. Come, let us drink, for now the wine is poured. Jesus' blood poured, let us drink together. In Jesus' presence now we meet and rest. In the presence of our Lord we gather. Them to spread abroad God's mighty word. Jesus risen will bring in the kingdom. this time, out of all of the blessings that God has blessed us with, we return a portion for the work of God's kingdom. And those online, I forgot what I was supposed to say to direct you to how to do it, but it's pretty self-apparent, I think.
We didn't rehearse that part. Next time. Like the smell of fresh baked bread. Like the sweet taste of wine or juice. The Lord is beckoning us to this table. The Lord is calling us to gather together, share together, and remember the depth of God's love for us that unites us with tables spread all around the world to share in the grace and goodness of God's love, to be people that live for the praise of his glory. So if you are feeling called, if you're feeling invited to this table, you are welcome at this table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Will you pray with me? Creator and sustainer of all that is. God who called this world into existence, that has poured love and grace and goodness into the soil around us, who has filled the air with your glory and your praises. We thank you for the beauty of your creation. We thank you for the love that we can share together with all those who you seek to call your children. From the very beginning, you have called to us to be your people, for you to be our God, for us to walk in your ways, to become like trees planted by the rivers of water that would bring forth fruit in due season, the fruits of joy and love and charity and kindness All too often, we have forgotten our vocation. We have turned a deaf ear to your call. We have closed our eyes to the vision of all that you desire. Over and over again, you have sent your prophets, your people, you have called to us And in the fullness of time, you sent your son, Jesus, to show us the way, to show us the path of righteousness and peace, to take up all of the disparate parts, to drive out all of the darkness and gather us together as people of your glory and love. So we thank you. We thank you. We ask that you pour out your spirit on this bread and this cup and on all of us present here in this place and in tables 
all around the world. So that in consuming these elements, we might be consumed by your love and leave this place as burning fires of your goodness and grace, bringing your justice, your peace, to wherever we may go. We ask that you hear us as we bring before you the cares and concerns of our hearts, the things that distract us from your will and your way, the things that worry us because of the anxiety we have about those we care for who are sick and hurting or on the edge of death, those mourning loved ones, those worried about relationships and work and jobs and money. Hear us as we bring all of that before you, knowing that you are a God of healing and hope. Loving God, knowing that you have heard us in the quietness of our hearts, we ask that you hear us as we unite our voices in the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the very same night in which our Savior was betrayed, and arrested. And after giving thanks for it, he broke it and said to those present there, this is my body given for you. Take, eat, this do in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after dinner, he took the cup and after blessing it, he said to them, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This drink, all of it, do this in remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. From what I understand, and I could be wrong, you will um, come forward if you are, are able, uh, take each of the elements, and then um, there are tables prepared um, for the taking of the elements, and then you can return to your seat. If you um, are staying in your seat, um, someone will come and bring the elements to you.
joined in love we stand as we seek the realm of God we unite to pray Jesus Savior guide our steps for you strong. 
Let us continue with our hearts in a spirit of prayer. Loving God, we thank you for this meal using the words of St. Augustine. When you are poured out upon us, O Lord, you are not wasted on the ground. You raise us upright. You are not scattered, but reassemble us. In the filling of all things, you fill them all with the whole of yourself. So fill us to overflowing with your love. Send us from this place as people of your spirit. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the love of God, the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you, both this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>